as soon as I get on the ice, you're just gliding and it's that freedom. I don't feel my disability, I don't feel the pain in my back, I don't feel the muscle spasms. When I'm on my sled, I'm in my world. Kevin Rempel's world hasn't always been prosperous. In fact, the Team Canada Sledge Hockey Forward has fought a lifetime of adversity. In 2002 was uh, the first year that I had ever gone hunting with my dad. That's when my life, for the first time, really changed. Kevin's trials began in the winter of 2002, deer hunting with his father, Jerry. It was a clear day, and Jerry had just climbed a tree stand when the unthinkable happened. I just heard a branch snap, and I looked up, and I just seen my dad just fall straight to the ground and like clear the side of the tree off and smack. After my dad had been brought to the hospital and uh, x-rays were taken, the doctors deemed him to be a complete paraplegic. My dad's attitude after his injury became very negative. He uh, felt like he was cheated out of life. He just didn't feel that this is the way life should be and he didn't he wasn't willing to adapt. Kevin needed to escape his father's negativity, and his refuge was motocross. In the time following Jerry's injury, young Kevin made amazing strides in this dangerous sport and had visions of turning pro. I had dreams I, I would want to ride in front of a crowd and, and be a professional rider. Even just for a short period of time, I wanted to like sign autographs and, and just kind of be a star. After my dad got hurt, he always told me to stop riding. He said, you don't want this life. Uh, you're going to get hurt, and you don't want to be hurt like me. I was willing to take the risk of paralysis because I wanted to pursue my dream. I lived with that in the back of my mind. I was willing to accept that. And then it was a few years after my dad's injury, um, July 15th of 2006, I was uh, attending an event called Rock the Wake in Halliburton, Ontario. I was a little nervous as I first got there. As soon as I hit the ramp, I got like a kick out of it. Right away, as soon as I hit it, I just knew something wasn't right. I just looked up at the sky and I said, oh crap, I'm paralyzed. And that was the first thought that ran through my head. And then the second thought that ran through my head was, my dad told, your dad told you so. Kevin's back and his dream was shattered. He was deemed an incomplete paraplegic and told he would likely never walk again. Now father and son were in wheelchairs, a cruel twist that widened the relationship's wedge, causing daily arguments. What really motivated me, besides like other riders who have gotten better, uh, was just I came home and I, I didn't want to be like my dad. I didn't want to, I didn't want to accept the sorry life of being in a wheelchair and feeling sorry for yourself. Kevin was determined to recover, and so began a painful rehab process. It was the first time I'd ever met Kevin, and it was uh, surprising to see how determined he was told me he was going to walk again and at that point he was actually talking about riding his motorcycle again. I've been doing this long enough to know that it's really the attitude that helps the recovery and Kevin has that. Ever since I got hurt all I could think about was getting back on the bike. That was something I wanted to make happen. Exactly one year to the day, almost to the hour, uh, I threw a party out in the sand pits in uh, Oshawa, a place called Raglan's, and uh, I got back on the bike. <laughs> Physically, Kevin was making remarkable progress, but at home, the situation was far darker. In April of 2007, Kevin's mother, Shirley, left his father when his depression 
and the gambling addiction became too much. He said, I want you to come home. Will you come home? And I says, no, I'm not willing to come home. If you're not coming home, then I'm, you might as well call the cops because I'm going to end it. Mom phones me maybe five, 10 minutes later. I answer the phone and said hello. And uh, she says, well, he finally did it. He ended it. Jerry Rempel took his own life at age 54. Mentally, he could never conquer his injury. But Kevin was resolute and wanted to walk a more positive path. After all of that stuff happened to me, I certainly had my periods of depression. The bottom line, what it comes down to, is that I'm not willing to accept that life. Kevin could walk, but his legs would always suffer from atrophy. But despite this, Kevin wouldn't abandon his dreams. He simply altered focus after falling in love with sledge hockey in 2008. Yeah. Nice. First time I ever told my doctors or rehab team that I was that I wanted to make and I was going to make Team Canada, they thought I was crazy. After a short period of time, I thought that that's stupid. I said, "Why do I? I didn't believe doctors before. Why would I start believing them now?" And soon enough, I just decided, "Screw it! I'm going for it. I'm going to make the national team." And within two years of strapping into his first sled, remarkably. Kevin Rempel would be named to Team Canada in 2010. Oh! I do remember screaming on the phone, congratulations, and you know, I'm jumping up and down, he can't see it, but <laughs> I'm, I'm that happy for him. Kevin plans to play at the 2014 Olympics in Russia. Until then, he'll travel Canada, delivering speeches about overcoming adversity. The biggest lesson I want people to take from my story is to not give up. It, no matter how hard times might be or, or what you're going through and what people are saying to you, just don't accept no for an answer. And despite their differences, Kevin still feels the positive presence of his father, a man whom Kevin knows would be his biggest fan. I know that if my dad could see me now, he'd be proud. It sounds cheesy, but I know he's looking down at me smiling. Gerald, like Kevin said, would be very proud of Kevin up there in the sky. And I'm sure that he's spreading the word to everybody up there, hey, that's my son that's on Team Canada.